Wine was in washroom of her school. Angrily washing her arms and face, she huffed and looked in the mirror. She accidentally fell asleep during the class, and when she woke up, she had a ton of students laughing at her. All because that one stupid guy made so-called doodles on her arms and face, he wrote words which was enough to make everyone laugh. This was how they were. They hardly ever got to interact with each other, except for when they had to pull a move on another that would drive them mad. Wine, I hate him to core. Why don't he let me breathe? She groaned, trying not to remember the fact she spilled a ton of milk on his new clothes and hair yesterday in front of everyone. She hated even more how she found him hot when he changed into his sport sleeveless tank top and shorts. Wine, he is hot, but so goddamn annoying. She was in no mood to stay in school for any longer. She decided to call it a day and return home. Eventually, she decided to take a long route, not in the mood to explain it to her mother while she was skipping classes. Her mother never restricted her from anything. If she wanted to be friends or go out and have fun, she was allowed. But the only restriction here was good grades and studies, complete attendance and perfect internal evaluation. She wanted some fresh air and as much as the cloudy and windy weather made up her mood, she knew it was going to start pouring heavily soon and she needed to get back home quickly. She cursed internally and took off to return home. She wandered quite far away from home in hopes of killing the time and somehow that was doing her a disadvantage, especially the fact no cab was stopping her. They were mostly filled because people preferred traveling in cars instead of on foot in such weather. Why? Good God! Why me? Why today? I should have stayed in school. She proceeded to take a shelter when heavy rain started pouring down, running when she found a cafe across the road. She cursed aloud one this time, when the signal for cars to run turned green and all the weight soaked her from head to toe in that heavy rain. It took a few minutes. She hugged herself tightly. The rain was ice cold and regardless of the cool summer weather, it was actually bone chilly. A car stopped in front of her, near the pavement. She stepped back keeping her arms around herself tightly, hoping for it to provide an extra layer for her. Once the glass rolled down, she found the man who was the cause of her this state right now. Maybe God decided to have mercy on her situation made her meet the real reason behind her misery, so maybe she could punch him and take her anger out. Jungkook, get inside. Why? Why? Are you giving me a lift? Like a sweet gentleman? Say no, otherwise that's going to be written in history. Jungkook, I like the sound of it. Now, get inside. Why? As if I would. She rolled her eyes, turning away. Why would she even take any help from him? Well, realistically, she should, considering the upcoming storm. Jungkook, get inside, Wyan. Or you know, I can get it my way anyways. She glared at him with a look of determination. Who he thinks of himself? Who is the real reason behind all of this to start with? She groaned and got inside the car without a care if the seat got wet. His choice after all. Jungkook drove up there and surprisingly enough, 
He turned the heating level higher when he noticed her shivering. When? It was not my choice. I'm not paying back for your beautiful act of kindness. Junku, I didn't ask for anything. Wine, do you realize you being nice to me in general is extremely sus? Jungkook smirked and she rolled her eyes. The two didn't say anything anymore for a while. As her shivering stopped, her eyes fell on his hands, handling the steering wheel with such perfection. He kept his one hand on the wheel while other hand rested on his thigh. A drop of sweat trickled down his temple. It was surely burning in that hot temperature. She let it stay like that. He was supposed to pay for what he did anyways. Boyan, you are supposed to drop me off at home. Just when she started feeling bad and decided to lower the heat. Jungkook. You actually thought I'm giving you an extra ride and going all the way to your home to drop you off? She groaned. Jungkook, the hell? Why did you ask me to get in then? Wine, stop the car. I'm not going to your home, you pervert. Jungkook, what did you call me? God, even a pervert wouldn't look at you. Wine, Jungkook, stop the car right now. Jungkook, all right. He rolled over and stopped the car and Wayan took no second unbuckling her seatbelt. Jungkook, let me tell you miss, your clothes are sticking to your body completely see-through. I can see your ready nurse. With a shock spreading across her face, she instantly hugged her body and turned her face towards him. Wayan, you are a real pervert. What? You mouthed when she started staring at his jacket. I'm not giving you that. Wine, come on, where's that gentleman now? Give me the jacket. How am I supposed to go out like this? Don't cook. I didn't even offer you getting off. That was your choice. Now handle your decision. She looked down at herself and closed her eyes, sticking to her seat. She buckled up the seat belt again and took it off a sign to drive off to his home. Was she even supposed to trust him and go to his home? She never once had any nice interaction with him. She can't blame him either. She herself was the same way. Once she pulled a plank on him and almost caught him expelled from school. Jungkook, of course, took his revenge. Their relationship was just like that. They hated even looking at each other, except for this time. For all she knew, it was the first time they even ever had a conversation. Once Jungkook reached his home, he parked the car and the two got out. He put his jacket around her shoulders and closed it from the front, jerking her a little in the process. She was ready to protest, but the expression on his face didn't look like he was messing with her at all. She realized how tall and broad he was, enough to tower her figure. His body radiated such heat she was in need of. There was one thing she hated. It was him in particular. There was another thing she hated even more, finding him hot even when he annoyed her. He walked inside and she followed him. He had a nice, huge home accommodating a fountain and a swimming pool. Two of his sports cars parked outside. The interior was as luxurious as the exterior.
The two were greeted by an elderly lady. Once they entered the lounge, Martha, oh, you are back. Is that your friend? Jungkook, she is Wyan, and this is Martha. She takes care of the home. Wyan bowed, greeting her with respect. Martha smiled at her and welcomed her warmly. Martha, I prepared the dinner. If you need anything, tell me. Jungkook, no, thank you. You can leave. Did you call a cab? When Martha assured him she would return safely in that weather, Jungkook let her go. Wine, why didn't I get any cab? She mumbled to herself, keeping the jacket firmly around herself. I need to change. Jungkook, you don't have clothes. Wine, normally you are supposed to offer me yours. Excuse me. He turned towards her with an offended expression. He was wearing a half-sleeved grey-coloured t-shirt, and a pendant hung around his neck. This is not your sweet romantic novel taking place here. Wine, don't tell me you read them. She gestured toward the rack of books. Jungkook was fine unless she started walking towards the collection. Jungkook, well, sometimes. You know, what is the slittiest thing man can do? Yes, reading books. If she needed to hate her attraction towards him, it only increased more. And oh god, she wanted to kill herself for finding the only man out of 8 billion people this hour. Jungkook, you should actually change. Come. He grabbed her wrist and dragged her upstairs. From the corner of her eyes, she found a room. Its wall was made of glass. One look inside and she saw how exotic it was. The gaming stuff and musical instruments placed there nicely. It was that one rich hard throb whole school was crazy about. Jungkook entered his room and dragged her to his closet straight, grabbing one of his random button-up shirt and gave it to her. Jungkook, once you're done, come have some dinner. Don't complain if it finishes. He turned around leaving and she balled her hand in a fist wanting to hit him, knowing it would do him much damage. One minute he was all nice and the other minute he was back to being an annoying ass human. She hated so much. Who was he kidding to? He didn't know why he insisted on bringing her home. He didn't know why he was offering her food or his clothes or a place to stay the night. He absolutely had no idea why he let himself burn in the car only to provide her the warmth she needed. There was something wrong with him and he needed to get himself checked. He could take his revenge for all the pranks she pulled on him. But why was he sitting on the dining table and waiting for her instead of finishing the food which was originally made for him? Jungkook, I have to handle her for the whole night. And I somehow find it pleasing. Oh God, there is something wrong with me. To be continued.